Hello, I'm Luther Kruger with the Big Blue Sun Museum of Solar Cooking in Minneapolis. And I'm here in uh, beautiful Bronx, New York, a uh, lush green backyard of Wilden Fishman, who is on the board of Solar Cookers International. Uh, what's your position with uh, ACES or New York Solar Energy? Oh, wait a yeah. minute. Wait, hey, I'm, I'm getting to Solar myself. Cookers, I'm a secretary. Oh, okay. Well. He's secretary on the board, though. Yeah, well, that's that important. Helps. Number. Yes, that's the I'm in my second That's term. the most important one. I mean, <laughs> You get one word wrong and yeah, you know, lawsuits. I get, yeah, right. Actually, the tre treasurer lets me know. Okay, right yes, that's right. They're, they're, they'll prove it. Yes. Yeah. But uh, very active with uh, in, in solar power uh, with your in your life and uh, solar cooking, and we'll even take a little gander at the at the sun oven and operation out there. But but the main question is the first first question is how did you get involved with solar cooking at all? When did you first discover it? Uh, and then we'll talk about SEI and the development goals. I think I kind of knew about it because my mom sent me to a primitive camp and we really didn't have any light bulbs or any of that stuff, much less screens. But it, it was something I was reading about, maybe it was the beginning of Bucky, Buckminster Fuller's books. Sure. He, he started to hint at this stuff a lot and I was 18. And then I was in Texas and someone said, I want to start a solar chapter. Yeah. And I said, okay, I will help. And we were uh, involved at Mayfest. Mayfest is a beautiful uh, May weekend in Fort Worth where they do fundraising for Junior League and a couple of uh, very big women's groups primarily. And it's a very big event. And we, somebody brought a solar cooker and frozen peach pie and apple pie and all these things. And every so often that solar cooker would open up and it would be steaming hot pie would come out. And the people walking by would get a piece of pie. That's when I really knew that it was important. I was very concerned about mercury and arsenic from coal-fired power plants. And so now I was starting to get into renewable energy. Wow. That was it. Yeah. The, the solar cooking uh, is so elemental. I mean, it's... it's, it's it's the physics translated into the into me who slept through eighth grade science class. <laughs> so, that's great. Well, great. So SCI and the development goals. These are United Nations or World Health Organization. Who set up these goals? And oh, for years the United Nations studied and studied. There's reams. There's just tons of information about every single one of the sustainable development goals, and there are 17 of them. And the first one is end poverty, which technically, I don't know how that's even begins to be possible, but it certainly does play a part in the need for fuel to cook your food. So solar cookers is a solution to that part. I have a personal take on the 17 SDGs. I've been allowed by solar cookers to get into the United Nations with the official pass and everything we zing right in. We sit down to hear the reporting of every country that volunteers to report who have signed up to work on their 17 sustainable development goals. And we sit for two and a half weeks down in the United Nations, which in a very hot old summer of New York <laughs> is a very comfortable place to be with the magnificent dashikis and everything floating around. The crowds are wonderful. And so we, we've also matured now into having a booth, an exhibit booth, with lots of three, at least three solar cookers, if not four. And they've moved us into the best spot. I can see the East River if I lean over a little bit, with all the tugs and the traffic, and the, the East River is crazy right there. It's right next to Hellgate. And then I can look to the right, and I can see every one of the flags on York Avenue in front of the United Nations. So we've had both uh, listening to the reporting, and the reporting is clumped up into stuff like one time it's four or five parts of the sustainable development goals that have to do with education. And now the UN is uh, closed to that kind of meeting. So we're on hiatus again this summer. 
So people used to stay with me here in the Bronx so we could take the train into Grand Central and be in the United Nations ready. It was great. Great. So that's the poverty is the first one, and a lot of them tie into that first one. Yeah. But, I think yeah. some of it is, I, I, I get this theory that it's a way to world peace. Yep. The UN has been criticized over and over again, even though they do so much. Ah, oh, they're just a, and in New York, they do catch a bad rap because the delegates can park you into your parking place <laughs> and honk, you could honk your horn, horn right, that guy's not going to come out move. If you look at, if we helped women have more time because they can use a box with a glass lid, maybe some mirrors to cook their rice. Well, then the children could have more time with mom and not be out gathering firewood, which means destroying the forests and desecrating the lands. And so if the kids have time to read and go to school and there's a little bit extra money in mama's pocket, well, women could become very educated. And then what would happen then to all that war? Zero hunger. Okay. So or if you're not having to spend your money on, yes. on fuel, uh, you have a solar cooker, you would have more money for your food. And also, if you have any leftover crops, instead of letting them spoil, dry them in the solar cooker. You know you love dried mango, <laughs> dried papaya. Hey, all you countries that are doing this, build your box cookers. Stop using fuel. Fuel isn't going to keep being transported around the world and guarded by navies and armies and air forces and drones. We can do it. We can move on to renewable energy and solar cooking and solar thermal. Sure. Number three. Okay. <laughs> I've had to get out the cheat sheet It looks sheet like here. a little postage stamp uh, book here. Yeah. That's the key. Put them on the postage stamp. <laughs> yes. Each one needs a... I was going to do a train, and the choo-choo train would have a different colored car for each go. one of these, so the colors for each one of the sustainable development goals, Cheers. and then up would pop what it is and tell you more about it. And you could get a bracelet with the different colored choo-choo go. trains going around <laughs> with the SDGs on them. So we're talking about good health and well-being. One thing about the solar cooker is you can easily, easily purify water. Might not get the hard minerals out unless you desalinate. So yes, you can, you don't even have to boil water. Didn't you think that boiling water required 200 and something degrees? You had to fully boil it? No. We got a gizmo. What is it? 180? Yeah, it's six a 170, degrees. Yeah. So the gizmo has wax in it. And the one you have do the same thing. Yep. Yep. The so, WAPI. Yeah. The WAPI tells you that the water's warm enough. But as kids, we all thought we had to boil the water. Yep. We have to boil the water. It's the Boy Scout manual. That's yeah. the, for the boiler for X minutes per thousand foot of altitude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and so that's ingrained in all of us because all yeah. our, even if I was in the Boy Scouts, my dad or my uncle. Yes. Yeah. No. And on the girl side <laughs> of things, somehow we knew it too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You brought it home. That's right. Again. All right. So quality education, again, so that everybody has time to get more education because they're not gathering firewood. They might still have to go gather water. And uh, perhaps now some farming is starting up because... Without the deforestation, without all that energy, maybe time people have t have time to put um, more soil back together. You're not burning the cow patties, let's say, for fuel. You know, people burn dry cow patties for fuel instead of putting digging them into the soil and making their soil stronger and full of minerals, which give you good health. Let's see, we got their quality is gender equality. Well, I guess that comes along because men have sort of controlled maybe the pocket of many people around the world. And the woman had to go do it when she had, could with, with trying to provide for the family. And so maybe this is more gender equality because the stress is off having to have one person earn the money so that they can buy the fuel to cook the food. So now perhaps we can pivot and the woman is also drying fruits and vegetables and producing money for the family and the daughters are getting an education. So good for the economy. And then you have uh, clean water and sanitation, which we've touched on. So you already understand the idea that we could, with the sun, 
You can evaporate the water and have it be distilled or just having it boiled. So it's the beginning of looking at your health situations and maybe even giving people the courage to not get some of the terrible, terrible, terrible diseases. I think there's like river disease that affects the eyes. It's just all over countries. We're so lucky to be in America, if you're watching this in America, where our sanitation levels are supposedly pretty darn tough. So that's good stuff. And then, uh, I don't know, affordable and clean energy. Well, once you buy a solar cooker or make it from anything you can find, you're allowed to make your own out of stuff from I say when I'm at the United Nations, you might have these parts in the dump because maybe there's a box there. Sure. You know, maybe we could find a piece of glass. Maybe there's some, does your country have aluminum? Oh yeah, most countries have aluminum. Do you have extruded? Oh yeah. Well, there you go. You're in the business. That would be great. The materials is a quick interjection. A shout out to a Brooklynite. Chris Hackett, have you heard the name Chris Hackett? He had a TV show called something dealing with Hackett or I don't remember, but it was about a, a, a makers group. He had started a group at Madagascar Institute in Brooklyn. And he says, don't go to the, the hardware store to get this. It's everywhere. It's the most common element on earth. Obtainium. Obtainium. Obtainium and aluminum. <laughs> Aluminium. Aluminium. <laughs> you can find it everywhere. There's no mine, but it's everywhere. It doesn't, yes. it doesn't there's a, 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 a vein in the mine. Uh, it pops up in your neighbor's alley. You know, it pops up at the junkyard, and you can get all that up to you. Is, it, windows, is it the most the available uh, metal on earth? It's like windows and you know scrap oh, aluminum. Oh yeah, yes, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's <laughs> obtain you know. Oh, now I'm gonna yeah. So you just go get those beer cans, right. paint them black, right. put them in the box, and you got heat. Yeah, any solar cookers you can make entirely with obtainium. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so up. I don't know. We'll jump up to uh, number nine is industry innovation and infrastructure. Of course, we do want to see coal, solar cookers be at Home Depot so everybody could pick one up and have it in the yard. And that is a goal that we need to meet. We need to find people who are willing to put out the time and effort and find the substantial, you know, develop the actual dollars that need to go into putting together very useful, even for somebody living in an apartment building, south facing up here, north of the equator, yep. south facing with a terrace, why don't they have a little solar cooker? Yes. I mean, why should they be forced to heat up their house, heat up their oven in the heat, when they could put the thing out on the terrace and two or three hours later have whatever, I mean, for me, it takes me about two hours to make uh, two cups of brown rice. Yep. All right, so, you know, we could jump along here and kind of get through the 17. Sure. So, I don't know, reduced inequalities, of course. I have seen pictures from Solar Cookers International's beautiful newsletters. The men can co-op the whole event. The women cook up 10 dishes. They put it in these big, this big box. They put an incredible piece of glass down over it. And the men want to open the box, and the men want to see all the dishes come out. So that's the gender equality right there. The women do all the prep, and the men love being at the barbecue pit, right? Isn't that where it is? Yeah. Sure, sure, why not? They gotta be doing that. Have another beer, turn the spit. I've heard about it. Okay. So, sustainable cities and communities. Well, my goodness, wouldn't it be nice if we eliminated the smoke? Please. The birds over here going nuts. They love that. Yeah. So the. The, yeah, the, the idea that we burn some fuel that either comes to us under pressurized pipelines that can blow up and get to our stove, it's not so clean, that natural gas. It emits a lot of extra poisons that settle down into the low part of the room in the kitchen. It might be where the dog and the cat are or the baby. There's a lot of stuff that's in fracked gas that burns. If your flame is pure blue, I mean pure blue, then you've got methane, you've got real natural gas, pure natural gas. But if it's got those little tiny flecks of yellow, any yellow, then you have impurities and that's burning as well. So then you might have an electric stove. If you're producing electricity way out there at the electric plant, all of that 
smoke and matter goes up into the air and out comes arsenic and mercury, zinc, and it covers and it makes our water too acid for fish. So we live in cities that borrow clean air from the country, make it all smoky and horrible. Now, when that electricity comes down the line to your house, do you think all of the electricity that enters the wire actually makes it to your house? No. Up to 18% evaporates out of that wire. So you've made all this terrible mercury and all the junk out there. And then the wires bring it to the city so we can burn it here, which we will electrify America. We have to so that our air stops being full of burnt parti you know, particulate matter and all of this that we keep throwing into our atmosphere. If you could walk 10,000 feet straight up, that's all the room that we have to stuff all of this particulate matter and soot and mercury and arsenic and bad gases and things that cause babies to have brain damage and leukemias and cancers. So yes, it's a better idea to do every single thing that we can with the sun or with renewable energy in this kind of a manner. And yes, it takes two minutes longer. We're going to show you just how two minutes it doesn't. It's under a second to open my solar cooker. Number 12 is responsible consumption and production. Yeah, if you're going to build a, a if you're going to buy a gas stove, all you're doing is a, getting a huge metal box with nothing but little pipes in it. And you're going to pay $425 minimal for that. And then that, so, and the infrastructure of gas pipelines and all that has to be associated to that. So we begin to demonstrate how we love our new LEDs because LEDs have definitely taken your electric bill and made it plummet. Now we're looking at your gas bill and those things, and we'd like to see it edge down too. And so that's, this is why solar cooking is perfect. My, maybe you only have 100 super sunny days a year, 120 here in New York, super sunny days, 120 partly cloudy. I've started food and had it cloud over and I finish it on the stove, but at least I started it out here. And then you have 120 days of rain. And then don't even talk about the dark days of winter when I'm, you can use the dining room. Alan has proven that. Yes. Did he talk about dining room solar cooking? Mm -hmm. If you have a big plate glass window, put that solar cooker right in there in the winter sun. You got it. All right. So 13, climate action. So, of course, everything we've talked about is to defray the climate change, which is being caused by all the stuff getting up in our atmosphere. And then life below water. Well, where did all this heat that we developed on planet Earth go? It got sunk into the oceans, so now the oceans are warmer, so they're making bigger hurricanes. Isn't that part of climate action, too? All right. And then life on land. We talked about the lakes and how you have so much mercury and arsenic, and now they're all, it's hard to fish. What happened to all of our fish population? PCBs in the Hudson River, thanks to General Electric. It's... You know, this is the pollution of our own fisheries, the places where we could feed ourselves, has now had oil spill after oil spill after, I mean, Macondo, uh, the Valdez up there in Alaska, that entire bay. What was it? It's the herring is gone and the pollock is there and it's not nearly as good for seals. It doesn't have as much protein because when they came up for air, there was a big skim of oil and everything died. So then we have the uh, peace, justice, and strong institutions. How can solar cooking affect that? What do you think? Well, I'm thinking when people can be independent with, with their basics in life, they can't feel subject to you know, autocratic governments and, and all sorts of other powers that be. And all of a sudden, I'm the power that is with, with, in control of my own life. That's my thought. I think sometimes, unfortunately, because I'm like a Vietnam War era, yeah. the Khmer Rouge would come down into villages and take every chicken, every woman, every vegetable, and leave it blank. And I think the same thing was happening with the Rohingya that moved out to Bangladesh. 
these tribes of people that just come and rob your village blind every two years. You get things going again, everything's back to normal, but then here comes somebody who just loots your entire village. And that's why I'm thinking that the sustainable development goals are something that's necessary for a planet that now has how many billion people? And when I was born in the United States, 1950, we had about 150 million people. And now we have 320, 330 million people. So no wonder they're building here and building there. And with COVID, everybody moved out. And it's the, you can't buy lumber. Yeah. Because everybody renovated everything. <laughs> and they, <laughs> it's so funny. Last summer, they got the petunias matching the... Yeah, everything matched up. The flag, the United States flag, and then the petunias in red, blue, and red, white, and blue. It was great. I mean, upstate New York went crazy with that. So it was good stuff. And then we get down to number 17. Number 17 is we have to find like-minded groups and work together. But the last line, paragraph of Exodus, yeah, that, the Old Testament. Exodus, read the last paragraph. Moses, and this is Moses' father-in-law, you did a great job, but you need a team. And that's the end of Exodus. You did a great job. Getting, let my people go and get across the 40 days running, living in the desert and the whole nine yards and the sneaky tribe behind you that would catch anybody who fell by the wayside and all those horrible things. and believing the word and some didn't believe the word and you had Caleb and uh, J Joshua and all these different stories my goodness the book is worth reading it's it's renewed so we need to form teams and Solar Cookers International has exactly that we have a fantastic team in the office wonderful board very interactive we work very 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 hard to do what we can and I'm I know we haven't got a solar cooker in every yard yet, or chicken in every pot, as they like to say. But we're closer and closer. We're working with 133 countries, and we're United Nations recognized as consultative status for about 33 or 34 years now. We had people sitting down there in an exhibit booth back in 2004, 2005, and I had never seen a live Solar Cookers International person before. And there they were, and with a little table. So we have to keep getting the word out. We have the aluminum. We have these things. We can make glass in every country. Because every time I meet one of these ministers that comes around to our booth, I say, oh, we're not selling. No, no, no. We want you to make this in your country. And when I was in India and Gujarat at our conference, I said, Wall Street is waiting for us to present these, to come out with it. Because you can air condition with this kind of a system. You can cook for many, many people. You can enlarge it. It's not just the little one that you can have on your terrace. It's the whole solar thermal is not photovoltaics. It's inexpensive. Buying a solar module is expensive. And solar thermal is not expensive. So. When we think about heating our hot water to get hot water, using the old black rubber hose inside of a box with a glass lid on it, when I talk to kids today, even in the skin, the STEM program, they, they're at a loss. I'll say, does it get hot in this box or cool? And they just they button up. The lips go flat across, and they don't want to answer. STEM is not delivering enough science. And we have a little ways to go with our public school kids having really missed out. They're being educated with English and math and, and to the test. And that we're coming away with math anxiety. And 60% of the kids that go into an engineering program drop out because of math anxiety. So we need to start young. Yeah, well, and just to summarize these yes. goals, uh, all of them are met with solar cooking. Yes. Solar cooking, getting them into the hands of any one individual is one step toward meeting any one of those goals. Yeah, we're yeah. removing the cost of buying charcoal yeah. and being in a little hut and you have three stones or whatever and you've got some wood, charcoal, wood, charcoal. That's what you have to spend your 23 cents that you made that day. It's this vicious cycle where you always have to buy fuel. 
And the smart stove people, they kind of want you to have a little propane stove. With a little propane, that's a whole other thing about having to have a pipeline. With this little gizmo, you don't go up and refill your propane container, not once. You don't need to have an electrical outlet unless you have the ugly. Yep, yes. <laughs> <laughs> when we have the, the pipeline, it's already has already yes, been built. The pipeline is There's there. The uh, Paul Arvison, he had the he had the phrase, "This is pure wireless energy." Yes. <laughs> There's no wires. There's no pipes. Wireless it's original energy. wireless energy. What do you do with the thing hanging out of your ear? You know, I thanked him because I said, you know, after I get this stuff and I got it, I got to come up with a title. Well, he gave me this: "The Sun, the, fr the original wireless energy." And some people want to call it the original <laughs> nuclear power plant. Yeah, right. Yeah. Safely yeah. located. Yes, yes. But don't stare into it. Yeah, right, right. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for this. Filled it up with water, a couple inches over the black beans. And uh, this morning, I came out to the garden about the time that I know that this little spot will start having sun on it. And I actually had the solar cooker facing a little bit more around it's towards this way. Sure. Making it easy for me. And the sun is not at any point that's going to strike my eyeballs, which is very important Down to me. Down in. I was just taking a quick peek. Ah, now, <laughs> I might have used a little bit too much water. Now, I know the beans are right under there, and they are super well cooked. They're nice and mushy and squishy, and we just tried a couple. Yes. So now I'm ready to take it out, and I'm going to put it in the shade. First year, you may be. Oh, it's heavy. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a full, full pot. Yeah. 